homeopathic super sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today, I'll be doing the part two of Robert chapter 35. So in the previous part one, we had taken the example of synthetic drugs. In this part, Robert has taken the example of aspirin. So he said that it was used for control of pain due to its sedative properties. So because of pain, the aspirin was given and because of its sedative properties, it, is, it used to induce sleep and the pain used to get subdued. They thought to, thought to be harmless at first, but later on came to know all about the depressive property. So initially when this drug came into the market, they thought it was harmless, but later on they found out that it has depressive properties. So the American Medical Association published warnings against the use of the substance, which was commonly sold under the trade name, trade name of aspirin. So the American Medical Association intervened and they should have, they should have warning about the sale. Sadly, this, the use of the substance was not curtailed to any marked degree. But in spite of the warning, the, the, drug, the drug substance aspirin was still used widely. It had become an all cure for domestic use and also used widely in hospitals. So for any small ail ailment in the family, the people used to use this drug and also it became quite popular for the, for the hospital use also. It was basically used by physicians to suppress the distressing symptoms rather than the cure of the patient. So basically the drug aspirin, because of its sedative properties, they were used to suppress the distressing symptoms. But those symptoms which were making the patient uh, regularly in agony or which was too, too much disturbing the patient, the pain was un unbearable. They used to give this aspirin as a result of which it used to cause sleep to the patient, the patient used to sleep and the pain used to get subdued. So basically what did they do? They used to only suppress the distressing symptoms and no cure was there. Homeopathy physicians have long known the danger of suppressive measures and has always had due respect for the innate powers of any medicament. So Robert says that the homeopathic physicians will, will realize what are the dangers of the suppressive measures? So they know that if you suppress the disease, the disease would travel from the superficial plane to the deeper plane, from less important organs to the more important organs and cause more distress to the patient. And they always have respect to, for the innate powers of any medicament. So the homeopathic physicians, they always knew or they always had respect for whatever inborn powers the medicine had. It was Hahnemann who observed that any drug was poisonous if dangerous dose was given. So our great master of Hahnemann, he observed that any drug would become poisonous if not given in the prescribed dose or if a higher power was given or higher dose was given, we, it would be detrimental to health. That is why it was a dangerous dose was given, was implemented. Therefore, it is to be expected that homeopathic physicians early recognize the danger of the synthetic drugs, among them the tolka, the coal tar derivative. So therefore, he says that the homeopathic physicians should recognize the danger of the synthetic drugs, especially the coal tar derivatives. The ability of the trained homeopath to observe and correlate symptoms made it a foregone conclusion that he would easily trace the depressed vitality the heart attacks and the many collapse condition to the frequent use of aspirin and painkillers. So Dr. Robert says that the trained homeopath had to observe and he had to correlate symptoms of the danger of aspirin on the body. And he said that it would be very difficult to, to come to a conclusion that the vitality was depressed and the internal major organs of the body were affected. The homeopathy physician is likewise trained to realize the danger of suppressed or marked symptoms. So he says that, Robert says that, the homeopathic physician is trained to realize the dangers of suppressed or the marked or the masked symptoms, symptoms which are masked over by the allopathic medication. Pain has this beneficial aspect and acts as a guide. Too. So he says that if pain, if pain is there, if you suppress the pain, it would cause more harm because pain is definitely a good indication 
or a guidepost for us to prescribe. So the different types of pain, different types of remedies are there in homeopathy. So Robert says that pain has this beneficial aspect and acts as a guidepost. The discomforts of an acute cold or gripe cannot be suppressed without grave danger to the ultimate health of the patient. So whatever discomfort is there because of an acute cold or a colicky pain in abdomen, it cannot be suppressed or if you suppress it, naturally there will be danger to the health of the patient. The prevalence of the symptoms never been well since is, is a proof of this. So whenever these drugs, synthetic preparations, aspirins, they were used for cold or colicky type of pain or gripe. It was always uh, been said that they had been never been well since. So whenever they use the remedy, for some time they feel all right, but again the relapse occurs and therefore they say, the patient will tell you that I have never been well since I've taken this sort of medicine. Let us see the next example of phenols, especially phenobarbital. So the next example is giving of phenobarbital. It was hailed loudly as curative and especially as palliative of many ills. So when this drug was identified or it was put up in the market, it had, it had a great popularity saying that it was a curative drug and it, it acted as a palliative also for many dangerous conditions. It was not long before the deadly nature was discovered and the warnings were posted against the use. So naturally, any new drug in the market, a hype was there that this drug is very useful. Later on, they found out that it had the side effects or they had dangerous effects on the body. So warnings were issued. They were still used extensively, but much more in a conservative fashion. But since the warning had come out, no doubt, the, they, they may have curtailed the use, but still, it was used extensively, but much more in a conservative fashion. In many of these instances, the earliest dangerous action was discovered. So in most of the cases when the drug was administered, naturally the dangerous action was discovered. Later more, insidious and long stand, long lasting effects were undiscovered or ignored until it was too late. But what happened? As they went on giving the medicine, then later on they found out that they had long lasting effects. At times, they, were, they, they would be able to identify the long standing effects or many a times it went unnoticed or undiscovered. Or, or it was found out until it was too late. As these then became a part of competition and therefore went unrecognized. So what happens? This became a part and parcel of the competition. That is what the natural disease was there. Over and above, the drug induced disease was there. Both were mixed up and it became a part of the constitution, which often went unrecognized. Of course, all these effects from first to last were homeopathic proof of the potential it's of cure that lie in the synthetic drugs. So he says that right from the first to the last, this shows us that the potential it's of cure lies in the synthetic drugs, provided they are made according to the homeopathic laws. To the homeopath, however, there should be one criteria for their use. The similarity of symptoms produced in healthy for application of the disease condition in the sick. So if you would use the synthetic drugs or potentize the synthetic drugs and use them as homeopathic medicines, he says, Robert says that they, there's only one criteria for the use. What is that? Symptom similarity. So that's all in this chapter. We shall see the part three, which will be coming up soon. Hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much.